You're watching Liquid Lunch on Biz TV. I'm Frank Morano sitting in in hour one for John Tobacco. He's going to join us in hour two live from Max Public House where he'll give us an update on his meeting with the sheriffs. I don't really give these sheriffs a lot of credence in all honesty. They're not even wearing sheriff's hats. They're not even wearing cowboy hats. I saw the video of all these sheriffs out there. How can you take anybody that's called sheriff seriously if they're not even going to be wearing a cowboy hat? Seems awfully silly to me and if you ask me, quite a bit suspicious. Something that is not suspicious though is every time this week when well every week at this time when we're joined by the lovely and talented Zen Sam she is a model she's an actress she's a producer she's a mom uh, she has a lengthy lengthy resume but this is only a two-hour show we don't have time to list it uh, but we're uh, very very pleased to be joined by Zen Zen it was good to see you I had anticipated napping at this time so I didn't think I was gonna see you today but I'm so pleased that I get to see you on TV see our paths always cross, Murano, always. There's always an alignment there. Somehow, we always make it on, on some kind of show together. That, that's for sure. That we do. Now, and I know we're going to be doing radio next week, too, and if, uh, if you're a Zenaholic, you're going to want to listen next week as she joins me on the other side of Midnight on WABC. Uh, we're, we're working out uh, the day with her people because she has a very demanding schedule. Um, Zen, we're supposed to have a Zoom meeting later. Can we just have the Zoom meeting right now so that I can take a nap later since I was anticipating taking a nap now? That, that sounds great. Let's, where do you want to start? What should we talk about? All right. Well, I guess we should start with the massive exodus of people fleeing New York City. Now, during the pandemic, you fled north to Canada like a Canadian goose. Uh, you have Canadian citizenship as well. Uh, that's why you, um, you, know, you are so polite and buy milk in bags and say A all the time. Uh, but um, a lot of... Hollywood productions are apparently going north to Canada, and a lot of filming that was taking place in New York, that's no longer happening. What's going on and why? So as the second coronavirus wave literally closes down, Hollywood production hubs are coming back to stopping at a halt. But in Canada, specifically Vancouver and Toronto, they've returned to pre-pandemic levels of activity. So what we're, what we're seeing is U.S. producers have always safely shot ten poles and TV episodes on Canadian sound stages, sealed off from the outside world all the time. This is kind of why we go to Canada, because we have these remote um, and accessible locations. Canada has already returned to work, and strongly, in the Canadian film and TV production sector, despite these second waves across Canada, is proving to hold their own. I credit the North American industry, the unions and guilds, the provincial governments and health authorities. They really have stuck to protocol on set, including testing, social distancing, smaller crews. Um, and on that note, they agreed to reopen local film sets, big and small, without any major flare-ups, Frank. So right now, specifically Toronto and Vancouver, already surpassed pre-pandemic production levels in terms of the number of projects before cameras in those cities. And that, that is seen as a huge success for local players. So we have what is called a V-shaped industry rebound. And the recovery for production in Canada has been much quicker than they ever forecast. They went from 100 miles to zero, and then they were basically at 110 miles. And right now, in a very short time, we're at 110 miles, and we're, we're soaring. So I'm proud to be a Canadian at this very point in time. Um, and basically also driving Hollywood's return to Canada are these American productions, like you said at the beginning, uh, Frank, a line that, that were basically in the U.S. hotspots that came north for safe and less expensive shoots thanks to the local tax credits and currency savings. One good example is Sony's The Man from Toronto. That was starring Kevin Hart and Woody Harrelson. And they basically moved from Atlanta to Toronto. And secondarily, this is another big film set, ABC's David E. Kelly, the uh, uh, David E. Kelly procedural The Big Sky, shifted production from New Mexico and Nevada to Vancouver. Well, that's certainly something. Zen, what does John usually drink during your segments? Because they, the, I, to get this glass of water was a struggle. The only <laughs> thing they have to drink here is alcohol. So if I'm going to sit in for John, I'm going to sit in for John. What is he generally drinking when you have these segments? Uh, Freaky Friday is usually a martini up, stirred. 
Mar martini up stirred. All right, well, it would certainly help with my mid-afternoon nap. Uh, I'm on the fence. It looks like it's going to rain, so I may go with brown. I may go with, with uh, a bourbon. Well, stay tuned. Uh, stay tuned next. I'll tell you what we end up deciding. Now, uh, Zen, you are awfully blue today, which uh, which I like. Uh, blue, uh, you know, blue is is my color. Uh, again, I'm, I didn't dress with the anticipation of doing this show today. But uh, as Joan Rivers would say, who are you wearing there? I see you're blue in the background and you're blue in the foreground as well. I am channeling Prada. Ah. I am wearing, I am channeling Prada, but I'm wearing a Cavalli vintage uh, little biker jacket that's literally almost 15 years old. Well, uh, if you want to see more of Zen and see more of Zen in less clothing, I do want to encourage you to go to her website, zensams.com. Zen with an X, a whole world opens up, believe me. Zen, um, it's going to be interesting to see how film production bounces back. There's a couple of shows that I've been waiting uh, for them to come back and uh, bring a new season. Ozark, which is on Netflix. Uh, Billions, which is on Showtime. I know movie production has had a whole series of difficulties. What are you hearing about when people can start enjoying some of their favorite shows again? Well, it, it's really based on when this vaccine is going to happen. I mean, the vaccine is holding up a lot. Not that I would ever be in line to get this thing. I mean, I think the I think that I would rather jump in a pool of COVID than get this vaccine anytime soon, personally. That's quite <laughs> but, an image. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but I, I would. I don't trust it. I don't think there's there's anyhow. That's a different segment. But back to your question. Um, I think when the vaccine uh, plays out and plays out and it's given to the right uh, crews and controlled in the right demographics, like they want to start with first responders and then seniors. But I think Hollywood is going to mandate uh, this vaccine in many respects, especially especially the liberal left. It's all about getting controlled and programmed, as we could go on a, a bit more of what John Tobacco would have been covering right now in this particular comment. But I think that the we're not going to really see the intensity of, of our productions bounce back as fast here. Canada has a little bit of a different approach. Um, they've revved up production for other reasons. Over here in the U.S., we have a lot of these Democratic mayors in places like New York City and Los Angeles, both run by very Democratic mayors, are not allowing film productions to come effectively, you know, start up and running again. There's a lot of protocols. There's a lot of restrictions in place. The average micro budget film that was sub $1 million now needs at least half a million dollars in COVID preparation for their films, uh, for their sets, for their, for their crew, for their sanitation process, for the entire thing from A to Z that you can't even begin. Uh, a film production, if you don't have that half a million, I would say to about a million now in COVID prep and all of that. So it's put the micro budget world at peril. And right now, the bigger studios are the ones that are going to have the upper hand here. And the streamers are looking for content. But I don't think it's going to be consistent. And I don't think it's going to bounce back until this vaccine has rolled out for the U.S. Well, so your comments on the vaccine were uh, pretty interesting. Uh, why are you reluctant to take a vaccine? I and mean, here you have a vaccine that will be, by the time it's ready for distribution, approved by the FDA and the CDC. And here in New York, where, and we're both New Yorkers these days, um, you have New York's Governor Andrew Cuomo establishing a whole separate vaccine committee just to kind of poke holes in the National Vaccine Committee's recommendations. Why are you reluctant? I mean, look, as a mom, the first thing I always think about is not just me, but my child. What am I going to be injecting into her, her pure body? And I just don't feel like we know enough about COVID-19 in general. I think there's still a lot of disinformation. I think the research has yet to really come up with any kind of, of solutions and answers that make the, the public feel comfortable. And I think this vaccine is being rushed for many reasons. And when you rush anything, Frank, from my perspective, especially as a mom, bad things happen along the way. T's don't get crossed, I's don't get dotted. And for me, I definitely would not want this vaccine injected into my little child when I had even my, my doubts to begin with to vaccinate in general. I ended up vaccinating, of course, um, but I do have my doubts about that as well, especially with autism on the rise. But now to take this vaccine with all the metals and the compounds uh, and the byproducts that, that, are, that they're rushing into this without the clinical trials that typically take at least 
two to four years to really you know see any kind of significant side effect it feels very rushed to me and i just don't want to be part of that let's just get it because we need to get it to go back to normal if i have to exercise some kind of religious right i will uh because i definitely i'm not ready to to get the vaccine i don't want a vaccine passport y'all could take it and stuff it because that to me does not sound safe too huh? soon Quick. All right. Well, uh, speaking of T's and I's getting dotted or crossed, there are no I's, there are no T's in Zen, but there is an X. And if you want to see it crossed, go to zensams.com. You can also check her out in The Banker, which is on Apple TV. Zen, I will look forward to continuing our Zoom call either later today or whenever I see you next. We're on. Thank you. I give my best to the lovely Lauren Conlon as well, who I understand you're having lunch with today. Well, you, you, you are... Having lunch with me, I'll bring you my take on some of the news of the day next. Uh, this is Liquid Lunch. I'm Frank Morano sitting in for John Tobacco for hour one. Still to come, Michael Johns will be here. Uh, you won't want to miss what we have next. What it is, I'm not sure, but you can bet it'll be something.